Good morning, New Hope Church. Good morning, Christ Nation family. On this beautiful, beautiful Palm Sunday morning, it is such an honor and such a blessing to come to you. Um, though I miss the live interaction with our regular Sunday morning, <coughs> and especially um, on a Sunday like this where we um, recognize this as the first um, day uh, into the Passion Week of our Lord Jesus Christ. But circumstances allows us rather to minister to you from this platform. And I trust that as the Word of God goes forth, that it will continue to be a blessing, even in the fact that we are not between the four walls of the church. I want to just greet all the deacons and all the leaders of the church and even pastors, pastor friends that are tuning in from all across the globe and may God bless you as I share on this beautiful Palm Sunday morning what God has laid upon my heart and today more than 2,000 years ago now Jesus came riding through the town on the back of a donkey everyone of the four Gospels Matthew Mark Luke and John records this event of this week before Passover, even this day, Palm Sunday. It is interesting to notice that the Gospel of John, as we will be reading out of the Gospel of John, dedicates 50% of the entire 21 chapters to this week's events. I notice that Matthew, Mark, Luke and John records this event However, Matthew speaks more of the lineage of Jesus Christ and the life of Jesus Christ. Mark speaks a lot more of the disciples following Jesus Christ, Jesus' miracle works. And so does Luke speak of the life of Jesus more. But Matthew, sorry, John dedicates half of his entire writing to the entire week, including Good Friday and then Resurrection Sunday. And it is also important for you to note that there are three festivities that was paramount in the life of God's people. These festivities were Passover festivity, Pentecost festivity and Tabernacles festivity. And today is the Passover festivity. I would say it is possibly the the, the, the strongest out of all these festivities. The history and the background to Passover festivity is where Jesus took his people out of slavery, out of living a life of a curse. And he took them out of slavery, gave them an identity, made them a people and took them on a journey to get to know who he is and then ushered, him, ushered them into the promised land and gave them his covenant. Now, as we have spoken of the last weeks and the last few times that I came to you, we see in this trying time that we have to speak the end of, a mat of this matter from the beginning. We have to declare things that are not as though they were. I want you to continue to do that because we don't look at the things that are now. We don't look at the things, as Paul says, that are temporary. We look at the things that are eternal. The things that are eternal are in our heart. It works for us a heavy weight of glory of God in our hearts. Therefore, I want to implore you to continue to declare those things. Speak healing over the nations. Speak prosperity over the nations speak all those things that are good over the nations in this time Passover is a very powerful festivity in fact it is possibly the biggest um, holy festivity of our Christian people and um, as we stand at the first day of this entire week dedicated to this festivity I trust that 
you will switch yourself into a, a very um, reverent mode as we move through this week. I also implore you to fast on Monday and on Tuesday and on Wednesday and Good Friday morning we will come to you live again. So we will do that on, Sun on Wednesday evening as an encouragement as well and then on Sunday morning and Sunday evening as well. And today is a special morning. Today we celebrate what is defined as Palm Sunday. It's the Sunday where Jesus commonly took hold of a donkey and drove into Jerusalem. And it's the time of the festivity where all people centered around coming into Jerusalem to celebrate Passover. Now, it is always very challenging to come to you and, brought to, and bring to you a message that is more than 2,000 years old and it's always, as an apostolic teacher, a, a, a deep desire to unlock mysteries by bringing something fresh of an event that is worth or that is, that is more than 2,000 years old. And I start today calling this series, this entire series that I dedicate this preaching. And I want you to work with me through this next few days as I dedicate the next few days to this theme and this is a very important theme this theme God gave to me um, on the 20th of December last year and I pondered lots on this theme and I want to unpack the theme as I continue to speak about this theme please take your pens out please take your Bibles out and make a note of this theme the theme that I want to minister under is called the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. I repeat, the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. Now it's important for you to notice that the statement is, is, is about 1,200 years old. And the first time the statement was made was in the year 854 by an African theologian. He was also the first man to reveal the term Trinity and speak on the triune God. The blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. The gentleman's name was Tertullian and this was revealed in similar times like today. A time where much death is experienced. A time where many are overcome by death. We've recorded up till now over 50,000 people that died because of this infectious disease. Over a million people are affected across the globe. And watch this now. Whenever death of this nature is experienced, it becomes the seed of the church. Whenever death of this nature and this magnitude across the globe is experienced, it becomes the seed of the church. When so much death is experienced and a cure cannot be found, people turn to God. When the logic of man cannot be trusted, people turn to God. When death is experienced of this nature, and we often focus more on the way people die, and the circumstances of death and the events around death watch now and then we fail to understand why people died these are really martyrs people that gave their lives these people were not supposed to die but they gave up their lives and now I understand that their blood now becomes the seed of the church. I notice even today how many get stuck on the events of Passover. We get stuck into the detail of Passover. Like we get stuck to see the events of the death of so many people. We get stuck on the events of the death of Jesus Christ. We get stuck on how he died and how gruesome it was. But we fail to understand why Jesus died. We fail to understand as the body of Christ 
why he died. Yes, I understand the emotions are very strong to see how he suffered for us. But the deeper message of all of Passover is why Jesus died. He died so that we can be healed. He died so that our sin can be wiped away. He died so that we can live a life of blessings instead of a life of curse. He died so that the iniquities of man can be forgiven. He died so that the, tra the transgressions of man can be wiped away forever and once and for all. So I don't want you to get too focused around the events, but see the reasons why Jesus died. And if I look at these events, I hear of families calling out to God. Families that would never otherwise call out to God. Families that we least expect to turn to God. I even hear of atheist doctors saying there must be a God. I hear of agnostic friends waiting to visit the church after COVID-19. I see it is the blood of the martyrs that now becomes the seed of the church. Whenever mass deaths of this takes place over the globe, it is God allowing the church to be advanced. Allow me to read the scripture as we continue to hear from the Lord furthermore. John 12 from verse 12 till 19. And it reads as follows. The next day, a great multitude that had come to feast, that came from all over, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him and cried out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Then Jesus, when he had found a young donkey, sat on it, as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's cot. His disciples did not understand these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things were written about him and that they had done these things to him. Therefore, the people who were with him when he called Lazarus out of his tomb and raised him from the dead, bore witness. For this reason, the people also met him because they heard that he had done this sign. Now look at this. The Pharisees therefore said among themselves, you see that you are accomplishing nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. The setting was where many came down into the city of Jerusalem. To celebrate Passover. Many people knew of Jesus. Many did not know about Jesus. Many like the Pharisees were even against Jesus. But the Bible says as John uh, speaks of the events just before this event was where Jesus called Lazarus out of the tomb. Many of those people that experienced that saw that this was this must be the Messiah because they experienced the glory of God upon Jesus at that moment. They then now experiencing that this must truly be the Messiah. This must truly be the Son of God. Many came with different intentions, different thoughts to be surprised and shocked at the entry of this man, Jesus. I want to continue to talk to you about the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. A martyr is someone who suffers death. A martyr is someone refusing to deny their faith. But I also see how many die that were not supposed to die. Many die that are even yet prepared to die and their death leads many to the house of God. And therefore I emphasize this very powerful theme. The blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. Listen to this church. Many remember the death of 1500 people after the Titanic sank on April the 15th in 1912 on cold waters. Even after the captain said of the boat of the Titanic, not even God can sink this boat. 
But two years later, we don't hear of the story. But let me tell you the story. Two years later, a similar event in a similar fashion, May 29, 1914. The boat is called the RMS Express with 1,477 people on board sailing from Ireland to Canada. It sank, but listen to this, on board was 167 young people among the 1,477 people. These were young people from the Salvation Army, William Booth's uh, movement, the Salvation Army. These were youth on a mission to have revival meetings in Canada. These were youth on a mission on this vessel to go and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ on this vessel in Canada. And the story is told that this boat collided with another boat and started sinking. And they discovered afterwards only eight of the Salvation Army members of the total of 167 survived. But it was a strange event because all 167 of them had life jackets and they could not understand how come 159 of them died. And it's only when they came together, all the survivors, and they gathered their stories and then they discovered that many of these Salvation young people, when they had their life jackets on in the cold water after the boat has quickly sunk, they swam or swam to different people that had no life jackets on. They swam to people and asked them the question, do you know the Lord Jesus Christ? And when they answer the question, no, then they would invite them to accept the Lord Jesus Christ in the cold water, facing death. The, the Salvation Army young person with a life jacket on and here they're ministering to somebody facing death without a life jacket. And after they have led the people to the Lord, they would take off their life jacket and give it to the one that they just led to the Lord. And it's obvious to understand that all those young people didn't drown, but they, uh, they were overcome by the cold of the ocean. And the story afterwards was said that all these people that received the life jackets from these Salvation Army young people, these were truly martyrs. And there was a revival that broke out in the 1940s in the shores of Canada like we've not experienced before because the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. The blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. The story came out of these survivors that they got saved twice. The first time when they were handed a life jacket and the second time when they came on shore and they stepped into the house of God and they recommitted their lives to the Lord. Why am I saying this to you? Why am I releasing these very powerful stories to you. I'm saying this to you because there's an anticipated visit from God to the earth. We've seen these signs unfolding. We've seen these practical events unfolding. And we say something is about to unfold. Something is about to happen. And let me say to you, Passover and the events running up to Passover is where the people of God start preparing them where God is getting ready to meet with them. Most of the time we prepare to meet God, but this time Passover is the time where God prepares to meet His people. And let me tell you something, there's something very powerful that God is getting ready to do among the people of God. I want you to start getting ready to see so much of God unfolding. I want you to start getting ready to see from this point how the church doors will be flooded by people coming into the household of faith. I want you to start prophesying into this moment. I, I want you to start directing your heart and your mind into the direction of that which God is about to do. And I pray into these events and I speak life into every church and every church leader because soon after we hear the announcement that we can go back and have church, I believe God is going to do such a powerful thing. Let me conclude by reading to you John 12 verse 20 to 26. Then they came to Philip 
who was from Bethsaida of Galilee and asked him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip came and told Andrew. In turn, Andrew and Philip told Jesus. But Jesus answered them and saying, The hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. He who loves his life will lose it. And he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him my father will honor. Church, I want you to think about this as we prepare our hearts and go into this past over week. Prepare our hearts to receive from God all that God has destined. Think about those that have lost their lives. Think about those that are realizing they need to turn their hearts over to God. Think of the floodgates that we will experience at the household of faith. Think of God meeting people at the point of their need. I want to pray as we prepare our hearts to move into this Passover week that this will be a time of reverence, that this will be a time where we dedicate, rededicate our lives to God. If it be a time where you praying that God will bring restoration in your families, if, it's, if it be a time where you pray that God will bring a newness to relationships, let us speak and declare into this in this time. This is a time where God gets ready to meet with His people. God gets ready to meet His church. And when God gets ready to meet His church, it's all to reveal His glory upon His church. Let me pray with you today. Father, I call upon you in this time where many people are hearing the voice of God speaking loudly through even this moment as we declare your word. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will now move in the hearts and the lives of people like never before. Father, as this is the preparation day to move into what is defined as the Passover celebration, the time where God wants to meet with his people, we pray, Father, let us prepare our hearts equally. Let us prepare even our family members in preparation for this time. Let every day running up to the next few days, Good Friday and the Resurrection Sunday, be celebratory days where we acknowledge you as Lord, the risen Lord. I pray, Holy Spirit, that our days in preparation will be days of sacrificial love, of, of sacrificing, knowing that the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. We look forward to great times when we're back into the household of faith. We speak these things over your people now in the precious name of Jesus. Amen and amen. God bless you.